Yes. Yes. Okay. Buna, can you start, Buna? Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today's topic is about uh, not the TV series. It's about the concept and our life, law and order. Like um, uh, I think some of you have watched the TV series Law and Order or part of it. Uh, it's an interesting uh, series, but it talks about how everything in life need to be in order. And there are laws that govern our relationship with each other and govern our relationship with the government, uh, with the different institutions. And also there are law, laws and order that govern our relationship with ourselves and with God. Let's see. So success. We all want to be successful in our life. And there is a way to success. It's gradual. It needs thinking, analysis, planning, doing, keep on doing till we reach success. Imagine, for example, somebody who's, uh, who's going for training for a soccer game or a basketball game or any sort of sports. It's gradual and it needs effort and time. And also success in our personal spiritual life uh, takes time and takes uh, training. But we as humans, we tend to take the path of least resistance. Like for example, if I have on the kitchen counter a chocolate cake or a salad, I know salad is more healthy, but chocolate cake is more tasty or more yummy. So I tend to take the path of least resistance and eat the chocolate cake and leave the salad or leave the protein. And also in our um, practical and spiritual life, if I have a couple of hours, either I watch TV or I go and exercise, either I watch TV or I read, either I um, go chit chat with my friends or I go and study. So usually we take the path of least resistance because it's more comfortable for us. However, we all know that in order to succeed, we need to compel ourselves to do a little bit more and to use our time wisely and not to submit ourselves every time to the easiest or the funniest or um, the tastiest thing in life. Sometimes we need to sacrifice. So we know if you are going to school, our target is to go to college afterward. If you are going to college, our target is to uh, get a degree and to work. If we are going uh, into a relationship, our target is to get married and to form a family. But what's our target in the spiritual life and our, our personal level? The target that we are all wo working towards it is to be sons of God. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He became man. So we, sons of men, will become sons of God by adoption. What does it mean, adoption? Adoption means not like the whole humanity after the fall, after the sin of our forefather. The whole humanity was deprived of the grace and the blessing of being sons of God and the grace of being with God forever. But when Christ came, he called us again to be sons of God. He adopted us. He adopted us. And that's a call from Christ to us. And we need to accept this call and to work on it and to make it fruitful. And that's through our spiritual life in church. So we need to have a clear picture. What's our target? Our target is to be sons of God living as adopted sons by grace to God the Father. But yeah, th this target is very uh, appealing, is very like um, um, a very good target to achieve. But is there any obstacles? Definitely. In each step in our personal spiritual life, 
the devil will put obstacles because he roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And we call the devil the liar and the father of all liars. He puts obstacles in front of us and he puts lies in front of us so our eyes are not focused on the target. So our eyes are not, our, our minds are not committed to achieve the target. So have you heard about this church cannabis company, marijuana? The devil is using the very sacred bride of Jesus Christ, the church. He is using the name of the church. He is using sacred words like baptism, sacred concept, to promote evil and to promote sin. We know that many states, they legalized recreational marijuana. And the devil want to cover such a great sin, which is the addiction, with um, something that looks Christian, that looks spiritual. Like if someone takes a marijuana, he will feel happy, he will feel high, as if he is baptized. You know, in the old time, um, in the church of the, uh, of the apostles, they were baptized as grown-ups. And they feel the blessing of the baptism spiritually in their life. They marvel. They start to talk with tongues. They start to um, feel delighted with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Now we are feeling this grace internally. But the devil is covering his tricks, is lying about his obstacles. And he want to like kind of um, persuade us to do wrong things by his lies. Definitely this example is very obvious, but many other small things, many other small sins, many other small mistakes that the devil covered by his lies and the whole concept is he wanna betray us and he wanna, he wanna persuade us to go away from the uh, pathway of the work of Christ. And St. Paul has said before, for the good that I will do, I do not do. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. This means that in our mind, we want to be sons of God. We want to follow Jesus Christ. That the good that I will to do, my will is to do the good. But because of the evil, because of the obstacles, I'm not doing this. I'm doing the total opposite. That's the struggle of our life. Imagine, for example, a day that we have a couple of hours and uh, we want to do something good, as we said. Um, we want to fast. We want to have a small prayer. We want to attend a spiritual meeting. The devil will put every single obstacle in front of us so that the good that we want to do at the end, we are not doing it, but the evil that the devil wants us to do, we are, we are doing it. And how we can get out of this very difficult situation is by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. But we need to have a spiritual law, a spiritual canon. We have laws in physics, for example. The more force, the more acceleration. If you are putting effort in something, you will have a better result. And in our spiritual life, you also have a law. If anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless, unless he competes according to the rules and the laws. That's uh, from the epistle of our teacher, St. Paul, to his disciple, St. Timothy. If you are playing soccer, for example, can you score in an old goal? or you need to score in the opposite team goal. If you are playing basketball, can you continue dribbling for five, six times, or it's only two or three times? Every sport has its own rules. And again, the spiritual life has its own rules and its own law. The rule or the law of the spiritual life is love. God is loving us and we love God. And how this love is manifested 
it's manifested from God towards us through grace. Grace is free. Grace is a gift from God. And we take this grace from the sacrament, repentance, communion, unction of the sick, orders, baptism, and we take guidance from our spiritual fathers. The love of God is transmitted to us through his grace, through sacraments and guidance. And we express our love to God by our work, our spiritual struggle. And both of them, grace and work or grace and spiritual struggle, works hand in hand in a synergy to manifest or to uh, declare the relationship of love between us and God. So what are our work? What is our struggle that we need to do in order to express our love to God in order to enjoy the fullness of the grace of Christ? We have four main, main um, aspects. Praying is talking to God. Fasting is allowing our body to be quiet for a time so we can talk to God and we can listen to God. Charity is sharing the blessings with others. And charity could be money, charity could be time, could be emotions, could be understanding, could be um, just saying hello to people um, that we don't know, could be present uh, with somebody who is uh, having some difficult time in their life, could be praying for someone that is suffering, like uh, our friend Patrick back in Egypt and his family. So through prayer, fasting, and charity, we express the love that we have towards God. So reading the Bible and other spiritual book readings, we can understand how God is talking to us and how the devil is tricking us because everything is written in the Bible about the relationship between us and God and the warnings that Christ did or the warnings that Christ said against the devil uh, tricks. And as St. Paul said, because we don't... We, because we know all of his tricks. In Arabic, I can uh, correct the translation. Yeah. So, yeah. So the four parts of our work that we need, of our spiritual struggle or our spiritual behavior or our spiritual attitudes that we need to work on every day is prayer, fasting, charity, and Bible reading. And fasting has two types, by the way. One is uh, the general fasting that the whole church fast, like the Advent fast, the Holy 50s, uh, sorry, the Great Land before the Holy 50s, and also everyday fasting. I train my tongue not to curse. That's a sort of fasting. I train my eye not to look evil looks. That's a sort of fasting and so on and so forth. So those are the components or the items of the spiritual law that we need to follow. And one step in order to follow, or, or one good advice that we have in order to follow the spiritual law is we need to by force ourselves push ourselves, get out of get out of our comfort zone. Um, His Holiness um, uh, of Thrice Blessed Memory, Pope Shenouda, had a very nice book. I'm not sure whether it's, uh, it's translated in English or not. It's called um, Principle of the Spiritual Way. And he was talking about by forcing as the first step for those who understand uh, Arabic, and sometimes we have the wrong idea that the devil um, tell to us that you should not force yourself to do anything. Everything should be out of your own comfort or out of your own free will. You should not push yourself. That's a big lie. If you want to have a toned muscle or a toned body, you need to push yourself on the treadmill. If you want to lose weight, you need to push yourself on calorie counting. If you want to get high grades in high school, you need to push yourself to study more. It's the same in the spiritual life. If you want to attain a spiritual life of purity, of, of sanctity, of holiness, we need to push ourselves. 
to get out of the comfort zone. And yet to have perseverance. You know, back in Egypt, there was um, the monks in the fourth and fifth century, they used to weave those baskets. And one of the monks was doing the basket and he was talking to his spiritual father and he was telling him, Father, I read the Bible every day, but I don't remember anything. And I don't think it's changing in me anything. I still do the things that I'm doing every single day. Why should I continue reading the Bible? I don't benefit from it. So his spiritual father took one of those baskets and told him, look, this basket is dirty. Put some water in it. So he, he poured water. And all the water came out of the, um, of the holes in the basket. So his spiritual father told him, put again and again and again. At the end of the day, he put like seven or eight times. He poured water seven or eight times. And he went back to the spiritual father. And his, his father told him, look, the water, is, is, the water fell out of the, uh, of the holes. But what happened to the ba basket? It's much cleaner. It's brighter. It looks nicer. So it's the same in our mind. We pour the Bible. We read the Bible. Maybe you will not remember. Maybe you will not um, uh, study the Bible in a good way. Maybe you will not uh, memorize the verses. But the effect, the effect of the powerful effect of the grace of the Word of God in our life will be noticed by other people. Maybe not by us. But if you train yourself, for example, of reading the Bible on a daily, uh, on a daily basis, every day I read half a chapter or a chapter, by time my attitude and behavior automatically will change. Maybe I'll not notice, but other people like my friends, my family will notice, oh, he started to think more clearly. He started to be calmer. He started to be more cheerful. So we need to have perseverance in our uh, spiritual life. And every change in our life is gradual. You study in biology the metamorphosis of the butterfly. You start with an egg, larva, and then a, a full adult butterfly. It's the same. Our life goes through the same change in a gradual way. Like, for example, if I have the sin of... Um, pride or, uh, or um, anger or lust today, I will not change it in a in, in couple of weeks or even a couple of months. It will take years to change gradually, 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 and will attain the full change in eternity. Another advice in our spiritual law or in our spiritual struggle is to keep track, to stay on track. Like for example, today is January 1st of 2021. I decided that this year, I will make an effort to read the Bible every day. <clears throat> I put a plan, so by the end of the year, I finish, for example, the New Testament or the New Testament parts of the Old Testament. And I put a plan to pray at least two Psalms every day or one Psalm every day. 1st of January, I made the plan. What will happen 1st of February? Most probably, I'll forget what I do. Yeah, sorry, most probably, I'll forget what I need to do. So if I keep a diary, I keep a track, I keep reminders for me to follow on the plan. The same exactly like studying. If I say that I need to finish the, the, those exercises or those books by a certain deadline, I need to keep a to-do list to keep track. Who can help me to keep track on this, my spiritual guide or my spiritual father of confession? Well, let's go back again. We need to push ourselves. We need to have perseverance. We know that the change is gradual. We don't need to like um, uh, get bored or get frustrated. And we need to keep track to stay in our track of transformation from sin to virtue or from impurity to holiness. And it's never too late. 
like if I'm struggling with a particular sin for the whole, whole of my uh, <clears throat> for my whole life, and I said, "Oh, I've been sub I've been like enslaved to this sin for so many years." It's never too late. Once I put a plan and I follow up on this plan with my spiritual father, the grace of God will work in me and will help me to overcome this particular sin or this particular behavior, regardless of how bad the sin is or how severe the sin is or how long I've been enslaved to the sin. Let's take, for example, resisting the evil of the peer pressure. I am a high schooler. I go to a school where everyone there, like for example, they forge their parent signature, take days off and go smoke marijuana or go binge drinking, for example. And I need to resist the evil. I need to know that Emmanuel, God is with us. We are in the Advent time where we celebrate the incarnation of God. God. Christ, his name is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. I need to know that his grace is with me. I can resist evil with his grace. And I know in the Bible, that the Bible is a part of our spiritual law, if I'm reading it, I know how God helped people in the Old and New Testament. Like, for example, the three saintly youths, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abdenargo, when they were thrown into the furnace, the king said what? I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire. And they are not hurt. If you walk with Christ, we are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That's one of the apparition of in the Old Testament. The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. In the New Testament, we have Christ every liturgy with us on the altar. We have him every day with us because we are baptized we are called to be sons of god by adoption by grace so if i'm reading the bible i read the stories of the work of grace of god in the life of his sons so i get comfort i pray i ask god oh lord as you walked with the three saintly youth in the furnace please walk with me to resist the evil that's why we have in tasbaha for example especially during the months of Kiyan, many praises uh, talking about the story of the holy uh, saint, uh, the holy saintly youth, and how God helped them during the, uh, their time of tribulation in the furnace. And he will help us. And also, I am listening to uh, sermons, I'm going to spiritual meetings, all of this will, all of this will strengthen me to resist evil. I'm reading, for example, the history of our church. So, you know, I think many of them, uh, you know, Pope Shenouda, he was a pope before uh, number 117 before our current pope, Pope Taudros. And in the 1970s, all of you were not born, even me, I was not born. Pope Shenouda decided to resist the evil. The head of the, of the state back in Egypt started to persecute Christians clearly and bluntly, and bluntly. And he was planning to implement laws that put like, um, um, that would put the church in a very difficult time and put hardship on Christians. So because Pope Shenouda prays and reads the Bible and knows that Christ will be with him and with his Christian sons in the middle of those very hard time, he resisted the evil as we are called to resist the evil. And he paid the price of uh, this, that he was placed under house arrest for 40 months because he didn't allow evil to co take control over the church. And, uh, and many other details, but uh, that's the um, bottom line of it. So when we read church history, when we read the Bible, when we pray, when we attend Tazbaha, we strengthen our spiritual mind to fight and to resist the evil. And we know that we are helped and we are protected by the grace of God. 
So let's go back to the slide. Here is our spiritual law. Law, sorry. Love from God through his grace, through sacraments and guidance, work from us, prayer, fasting, charity, and Bible and spiritual reading. Both hands work, um, uh, uh, both sides, grace and work work uh, hand by hand in a synergy to attain the purity of life and the holiness of life to prepare us to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, any questions? Any comments, Abuna? Uh, this is great. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharif. I encourage you to ask questions if you have any. Do you understand the word synergy? Uh, Dr. Sharif mentioned synergy at the, in the conclusion looking here at how our life, uh, spiritual life goes, there is grace and work. So what does synergy mean and how is it related to this? Can you explain this in, 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 a, in a minute, Dr. Sharif? Maybe synergy, some of them are not used to the word. Sure. So energy means power, yes? Synergy means together, like the power works together. Grace by itself cannot save us because we need to accept this grace and need to pave the word, uh, sorry, we need to pave the road to the grace. Word by itself will never save us because whatever we can do, we are still human. We need the huge and uh, powerful impact of the work of grace from God himself. So it works like this. Together. And in Arabic, mean uh, um, the book of Acts, like uh, the writer of the book of Acts was uh, 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 describing the synergy, and he said, Al-Ameluna ma'Allah, those who works with God. And in the uh, in Saint Paul is teaching us about the work of grace. Al amil fikum and turidu. Like God is working in us to have the will to accept the grace. So they work together, hand by hand. Two powers, two energies. Sin mean together, S Y N, or hand by hand. I hope I explained it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's conclude in prayer and see you tomorrow at the liturgy. Those who are coming tomorrow or Sunday, please don't miss the liturgy. Um, Lord, make us worthy to pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all. Have a blessed night and sweet and pure dreams. Go to bed early, get up early, and see you at the liturgy. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.